Good evening and salutations, my JH fans. Well, uh, start with Franco. So after Franco leaves Elizabeth, she, um, he goes to see Jason, and he pretty much is just like, "So I need you to kill me." Now at first, Jason's like. Yeah, whatever game you play, I don't got time for you. I don't got time for your nonsense. I'm good. Um, bye. But then, you know, Franco tells Jason, you know, that the tumor's back. And it can cause, you know, side effects that may revert him back to the old Franco. You know, the, uh, the serial killer. Serial killer. And, um, you know, at that point, he's like, you know, listen, I need you to do... I need you to sit there... And protect the boys and protect people from me, you know. And so at that point, at fr at that point, more or less, Jason is. I feel like he's on board, you know. And he was like, you know, let's not do. I'll do whatever it takes to sit there, and, you know, um, protect Elizabeth and the boys. Um. Yeah, that was pretty much about it. Uh, so, Liz, Terry, and, um, Epiphany get together to cheer up Epiphany from this side story that I'm going to be honest, I really don't care. It has something to do with Milo and her breaking up and she's all heartbroken and, you know, then she tells this story about, God, um, you know, she tells the story about how, you know, she wasn't paying attention and their relationship fell apart and, you know, she's heartbroken and... I have to tell you, I'm not going to lie. Here's my issue whenever she talks about Milo and a breakup. I didn't see it. Like, he's not on screen. He, I don't think that he's on the show. They didn't really replace him. So, I have zero investment and zero interest into whatever side story that she's getting into. So when she was in the theater pouring out her heart and stuff like that, I was like, yeah, you know, this is pretty sad. Unfortunately, I just really don't care. Um, and it's not that I don't care that her heart's broken. Yeah, obviously I do. But besides that, I, I just, I don't, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that sounds pretty dickish, but that's just how I feel. Um... Now, there's a point where Liz talks about Franco and, you know, he's going out late to do commissions and this, that, and the third. And she says something and Terry has this look on her face, this, you know, this sad look on her face. Like, she's, you know, she knows she's keeping something from um, Liz, but she can't say it because HIPAA and we're gonna, you know, not disrespect HIPAA again. And, um... Epiphany picks up on it, and, um, Terry just kind of just scoffs it off or whatever, but then as, you know, everything winds down and they get ready to leave, you know, Epiphany asks her again, you know, is everything okay or whatever, and, you know, Terry gives an answer, whatever the answer is, I can't forget what it was, and, you know, Epiphany gives her one of, one of those, mm-hmm, kind of, you know, like she knows that there's more to whatever Terry is hiding. Um, so, uh, let's go with Jordan. Like I said yesterday, I said this yesterday, and you know the thing is, I would like to take credit for me being right. And it's not like I'm not going to take credit for that, but I feel like this was a plan that everyone saw coming. You know, Jordan fakes like she's having some sort of illness or whatever, and she tells Cyrus that, you know, there's complications with her transplant or whatever. And, um, you know, Kurt, because first of all, Curtis walks up, he's like, what's going on? What did you do to my wife? This, that, and the third. And then after, you know, Curtis goes and see um, Jordan, you know, you realize, okay, y'all cooking up something. So... After Cyrus leaves or whatever, you know, you got Portia, Jordan, and Curtis trying to come up with some sort of strategy to stop Cyrus. 
And, um, you know, Curtis brings up the fact that every time... Here's the thing. Every time that Curtis kept threatening um, Cyrus with some person that he cares about, some person that he set up. So, they're going to go... Um, well, Jordan and Curtis are going to go and see whoever this person is to try to get some more answers. And um, there was something else that they're supposed to be looking into. I forgot what it was, but that's the main thing. Um, is trying to figure out who is this person that Cyrus cares about and kind of... Oh, and also about some case file. There was a case file that um, Cyrus asked about. So they're going to be kind of like figuring out what does it mean, what is the significance behind that as far as... Really? As far as, um, you know, that's concerned with Curtis. I mean, um, Cyrus. Now, let's talk about Valentin and Anna. So, you know, they're trapped, you know, they're, um, you know, they're trapped in the warehouse with the, um, pressure cooker. I don't know if I said crockpot. Um, I might have said crockpot yesterday. Anyway, um, they're trapped in there, and it's about to blow at any minute. Between that and the gas and everything like that, they don't really have a lot of time. Long story short, they escape. And, I mean, I, I'm not saying that there's... It's not like... I knew that they were going to escape... Like... Yesterday. Um, so, they escape. And, um, you know, they call Robert. Well, actually, tell you, they called Robert. After the building exploded, Robert came down there. And Anna called Finn. And was like, hey, listen, just so you know. Um, my sister's coming or whatever. Because, here's the thing. When Robert... Got a call from Finn. He had a conversation with, with Jason about Spinelli and um, the fallout and whatever. As far as like Spinelli not doing a good job as far as, um, you know, lying pretty much. So, he gets a call from Finn. He goes over there. And Finn, at this point, is freaking out. And after he looked at the letter, well, the, um, the paper for the um, test results as far as... Um, you know, Peter and, you know, who, you know, who's Peter's mother or whatever, he's starting to realize there's something up. And eventually when, um, Robert gets there, he realizes that, you know, that may not be Anna, you know, because, you know, why, it, it's just, it's a whole thing where, you know, I have to tell you if I'm not going to lie, it's really difficult to explain, but I know it has something to do with the fact that Anna already knew and, do some sort of convoluted way. The point is, um, and I mean, Finn and Robert kind of figured out that Alex may be behind, um, you know, Anna's abduction. Also, I think he just got tipped off at the way that, um, you know, Alex was sitting there talking to Finn. Which, by the way, yeah, he does, um, Trying to sit down and figure out how to put it. Um, so that's, oh yeah, so um, they figure out that Alex must be behind it somehow. And that's when Robert gets the call to go down to the, um, check out whatever fire that's going on. And then Anna calls him up and, you know, she's like, hey, listen, just let you know, um... My sister may be back in town. I mean, at this point, Finn already kind of knew. He called Liz just to give her a heads up. And when he got the call from Anna, he's on the phone with Anna. And um, that's when Alex just, like, walks in, in the door. And, you know, she gives that, you know, that creepy villainous smile or whatever. And I'm like, all right, well, this is, uh, is going to be interesting. I have my theories about that towards the end. And if I remember to share them, I will. Um, which is honestly to tell you the truth, everyone's theory, so I don't even think it's really that much of a theory at this point. Uh, now Alex is, well, I'm not gonna lie, she's just acting weird, okay? And when by, by weird, I mean like she's not doing a good job as far as being Anna at all. So, you know, she's sitting there talking to Peter and talking to Maxie, and there's just little things that's just off, that I feel like Maxie is sensing, and, um, you know, Maxie goes to use the restroom and 
you know, Alex is talking all this stuff about, you know, you know, how you want to be a great man and how we're, we're so similar and stuff like that and how I can magically help you be the man that you, that you were meant to be. And Peter is just eating it up. I mean, this guy is just like, yes, yes, this is what I want to hear my whole life. Please, more. And I'm just like, you know, it's hard to sit, I can't sit there and call him a moron because, let's be honest, his childhood was like crap. Um, and this is all the stuff that he wanted to hear. So it's like, common sense and logic just went out the window and he is only thinking with emotion. Um... But then Maxie gets back and Anna, well, Alex decides to leave. And even Maxie was like, so, um, yeah, Anna was acting pretty weird. Just, just want to throw that out. She was acting pretty weird. Hell, at one point she was sitting there talking to Peter and Peter was just in a daze. So I'm like, and last little quick thing that I want to sit down and talk about was Lulu and Dante. So Lulu is investigating, I guess, one of Cyrus' henchmen or whatever. And he started, you know, they started talking and stuff like that. And, you know, whoever this guy is, seems like he's really nervous. And he, he's like, you know, this is just too out in the open. You know, anyone can see us. How about we go back to my place? You know, so Lulu is just going to trying to play it off or whatever. But before she can really get into it, Dante walks up and, you know, he's just all like, hey, um, you know, she's taken, this, that, and third. And he makes this guy feel really uncomfortable. This is after Lulu's like, hey, I got it. I'm good. Walk away. So Dante decides to sit in, like, a booth, like, practically almost right across them. And at this point, this guy is just like, yeah, I'm good. And then he just walks off. I'm not going to lie. I personally thought it was kind of dumb that you would meet in a bar where anyone could see him. You know, you, you, you're you working with Cyrus. So he was working with Cyrus. Whatever the story is. And you honestly think that meeting someone and talking about, you know, your involvement with Cyrus or how you met him in a public place makes... I, I just honestly tell you the truth, to be honest. Even as I'm talking about this, I'm like, this makes no damn sense whatsoever um but after the guy leaves you know Dante and Lulu get get into it and you know it's this whole thing about you know Lulu wanting Dante to stay um you know stay for the kids take care of the kids I'm good and you know at, at this point you know I feel like Dante is just There's one point where he, where she's sitting there talking about how Dustin's been pretty good, good to him, good to the kids and stuff like that, good to her, and for whatever odd reason, Dante just keeps, like, messing up his name, and I'm like, bro, it ain't that hard to still remember his name, I feel like you're just, you're doing that on purpose, and it's not like she doesn't notice that, I, <clears throat> I don't really understand that, but they, they get into it, <clears throat> and then at that point, you know, she gets a text from Dustin, and Dante pretty much walks out, and Lulu um, begins to cry again. So, um, you know, good job, Dante. Um, awesome. Um, of course, he goes outside, and he gets a text from some sort of mysterious person about complete the mission. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's pretty much where it ends off. Yeah, that's actually about it. I was literally sent there just making sure my cheat sheet just crossing off everything. Um, this episode was it was interesting to some extent. Um, Alex, the Anna stuff, the Valentine stuff was pretty interesting. Um, Lulu and Dante. I mean, it's 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 somewhat interesting. I'm not gonna lie. It's somewhat interesting. It's not. It's not super interesting because I just feel like it's the same conversation that just keeps happening over and over again with Lulu and Dante, where they just 
they're arguing and they're upset and there's just emotions and it's like I feel like we, we we've been doing a song and dance for like a couple of days now since Dante and Lulu have gotten back. I mean since um Dante has gotten back and I don't I don't know how to feel about it. Um it's like nothing super interesting happens. It's interesting enough where it keeps your attention, but it's like nothing important happens afterwards, if that makes any sense. And yeah, with that being said, um, that's actually going to do it. I don't think I really missed anything, and if I did, I don't think it's really that important. I feel like tomorrow's episode is going to be really good, and, um, you know, Brit is going to be in it, and that's always, that's mostly a good time. That's always been a good time now. I don't know who Brit was before. Um, I didn't really like that version, but this version, yeah, I'm rocking with this version. And with that being said, I'm going to go. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Um, I thought it was kind of middle of the road. Nothing too interesting. I think the problem for me was, sorry for keep rambling, but I feel like the problem for me was, was like the Liz and... Um, Epiphany, like, all that stuff was just, like, eh. Except for the fact that Terry feels guilty. That's the only thing that I actually found that whole scene to be interesting. Other than that, not really needed. Um, and I guess the Portia and Cyrus, well, Cyrus is always an interesting character. Um, and I guess that stuff was kind of interesting, too. I just want to see where it's going to go. It's, like, it's, it's... It's like they're planning stuff and it seems like it's going to be interesting. But then it's just like, so are we going to get to the interesting part yet? Or are we just going to just like still be, you know, strategizing? Because I'm not going to lie, you've been strategizing for a while and nothing has been getting done, Jordan. Just, just want to throw that out there. And, um, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to go. Um, thank you so much for watching. Be safe. Let me know what you thought of this episode. I will catch you in the next review.